This is Whiskey Whereabouts, I'm Tim, and today we have another head-to-head face-off between two whiskeys from the same distillery. We've got the well-known Lechig 10-year, and in the other corner, we have the sort of younger, brasher, cask-strength, Bordeaux, wine-matured, matured, um, rival. From the same distillery, we've got the nine year. We're going to put them head to head and figure out which one comes out on top right now. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here with you on Whiskey Whereabouts. So as we know, Lechig is the alternate um, branding for peated Tobermory. The unpeated whiskey they make is, is, is bottled as Tobermory and the peated as Lechig. We have a limited edition variant here. It's a nine year whiskey that is being presented at cask strength, 56.8% ABV. And this is a whiskey fully matured in Bordeaux French wine cask, not finished, fully matured. And uh, in the other corner, the 10-year comes in at a 46.3% ABV, and it is bourbon matured. Neither of these whiskeys has any chill filtration or color added. I'm not doing this blind because it is pointless to have a flight of two whiskeys this different. It's quite obvious which one is the cast strength, uh, Bordeaux matured whiskey, which is the... Um, bourbon matured whiskey. So I'm going to start with the sort of challenger here, the alternate version with the nine year, the cask strength going in on the nose. Yeah, so this whiskey is hot, but it is not anywhere near as hot as it was on the neck pour. This whiskey has been open, you know, a week and a half maybe, but even in just that short time, just getting the level down here, giving it some headspace below the shoulders has transformed this whiskey for the better. Then when I had the neck pour, I, I kind of sat back and and kind of went, uh-oh, this is way too hot. And I really, I really can't get as much out of this as I was hoping to. And there's still some, some heat coming off this cast strength whiskey but there's plenty of room for the flavors. And the flavors are a little bit different, a little bit, than what I would expect. You don't often see the, the sort of full maturation in the red wine casks. When I have whiskeys with that finish, I expect to find some, some sort of character of a sort of a darker berry. Here I'm having red berries, a little bit brighter than I might expect. Fresher, kind of red berries and orange, like an orange jam or jelly. And obviously there is a smoky quality. So the peat smoke is definitely there, but there's also another quality we'll often kind of associate with this Lechig style of whiskey. It has a meatiness. It has a sort of grilled, there's definitely some wood influence. It's not, you know, overwhelming. It's there, it's sort of grounding. Going into the palette now with the nine year. Yeah, it's thick, big, um, big mouth feel from this cast strength whiskey and it's sweetness forward. That is how it arrives and announces itself. It's a sweet sort of red, red berry, but red like candy sweetness right up front. There is some heat and it's manifesting in a very lively sort of, sort of black pepper across the tongue. When I had the neck pour of this whiskey, I let it breathe 10 minutes, but when I had this neck pour, it was so intense with that sort of hot sort of pepper. It was almost like tiny needles sort of across the tongue. Now it has had time and it has integrated in a way where we really now can get those flavors. And there is the smoky quality to it. It's sort of an ashy kind of smoke as part of the palate. Going back now on the finish on this whiskey. Yeah, the finish is long. Still going, just as you expect. The sweetness now has almost like a melty sort of marshmallow quality to it. There is this sort of smokiness. Um, it's just like dissipating smoke. It's not a roaring fire here in the finish. Um, it's nice, it's not o overwhelming. There is that sort of trace of that sort of meaty sort of element. There is that cask element, strongest here 
on the finish, I think. It's not overwhelming. It's all sort of in a balance. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the part where the other notes are balancing out the sweetness the most. This is a pretty sweet, pretty big whiskey. So because this is cast strength whiskey, I am going to hit the nine year with some water. Normally I have my little eyedropper and I kind of just sort of eyeball it and add some water. I pre sort of poured this um, half teaspoon of water. It's a lot of water based on sort of where I am with this having experimented with before, especially with that way overly hot neck pour. So I am going to add that much water because honestly, I'm tr I want to get sort of below 50% where a lot of us may be, you know, drinking this, uh, this whiskey if we had a whole bottle and I'm gonna let this sit for a second, come back and let you know how it presents. Yeah. And, and there's that note that I was talking about before that I associate with this type of casks. There's that dark, rich berry note. It's right up front. So the water has cut into the sweetness a little, brought out a little bit more of the, I don't know, that tartness or, or, or what, however we want to describe it, sort of that darker kind of berry. That marshmallow is now present underneath and that slight savory, kind of note is right under in a stack wisps of smoke on the palate now with the water it's really drinkable now but still really rich it's lost a lot of the heat and now i'm getting more of that sort of marshmallowy sweetness creamier mouthfeel certainly isn't washed out it's not quite as thick it's very very drinkable now that cask sort of element is there it's minimized this is much much more approachable but it's still very rewarding. Going back now, just for the finish, it's a near perfect balance now. It's the sweetness, the berry is back, a little bit of the tart berry, a little bit of that sort of marshmallowy sweet in the mix. There is a bitter, there is a little bit of heat. This is the last real vestige of the heat with the water. I feel that sort of black pepper across the tongue on that first arrival on the finish. I feel the warmth kind of in my chest right now talking to you as it's, as it's still sort of dis dissipating. So the, the finish is still long and I am getting a little bit of that uh, smoke still lingering. You get a little bit kind of rising to the sinus after that, you know, when it first sort of arrives and, and you transition into that finish, but I am left with that nice balance. It's almost like a caramel salty sweet. Uh, more than that marshmallowy sweet with that sort of tart kind of berry and with these other elements. Very, very nice whiskey. A whiskey that is really rewarding your effort to, to, to let it sit, let it breathe, and be open to uh, bringing in some water to help it along. So enough about the Brash Challenger. Let's go back. I'm going to remind myself why we all like this tenure so much on the nose. The... Uh, Lechig 10 year and it's a great great nose it has multiple levels sort of cascading the peat is there but you are getting this cherry almost cherry cough drop fruit element there's a nice cloud of smoke wrapped around it vanilla icing kind of reduction bordering on a butterscotch a very nice um, compliment. There's a floral element here, almost a minty element, and yeah, like a, almost a lemon citrus. It's a very nice note. It's it's a very nice nose. It's playing different notes and um, very strong competitor. So I'm going to go in now on the palette on the tenure. There's that grilled meaty element. There, there's, there's, it's more, um, the smoke is more integrated here with that element. There's also sweetness still, honey, vanilla. The oak is announcing itself. You're getting some of the, the sort of cask. You're getting some of that. It's playing very nicely with the smoke. It's it's all kind of wrapped up and giving you that sort of kind of savory kind of grill. I, I always think of this palette as being very Kalila like with that that sort of sort of grilled kind of kind of smoke um, meaty fire. Now back for the finish on the tenure. What a fantastic finish. It's it's each stage of this whiskey is better. When you get to the finish, it's the best part. And it is the succession of flavors. You get a big plume of that sort of peat smoke. Then you get a really rich kind of distilled vanilla honey sweet 
Then comes the casks. You're getting sort of the tannic bitter. It's playing with the sweetness, the other elements. It's all you're getting a, a sort of a, um, a a coffee kind of kind of note, an element with it, and it is plenty long. It is still going, and I have what's left is the ghost of kind of that sa almost savory sweet, that butterscotchy caramel kind of integrating with the vanilla on the sides. You got a little bit of the heat, a little bit of the cast kind of on the tongue, and you get that nice plume of the smoke kind of in the sinus. A very, very rewarding whiskey as you go through. So another matchup on paper that maybe didn't look like a fair fight. It's 10 year versus nine year, pretty close, but with this huge sort of cask strength advantage on the ABV for the nine year. It's almost a little too much. ABV, a little too much strength. It really needed to kind of be managed a little. And it, and what that included was letting, you know, getting the neck pour out of this bottle, letting it sit for a little while, and being open to experimenting with a pretty healthy dose of water, I found, really transforming this whiskey into a really drinkable, nice whiskey. They are both very strong whiskeys. If you put these two just sort of on the bar, and I'm going to reach for one. I probably would go with the 10 year that's ready to go out of the bottle. This one, I kind of have to think, you know, how long has it been open and, and how much water am I gonna have? Um, it's certainly um, a very close call. In fact, I think I would give, irrespective of value, the two whiskeys the same rating. I, I would honestly say these are four and a half glass whiskeys. This whiskey, costs between 70 and maybe you know not quite 80 dollars depending on where you find it which is a reasonable price for a very well presented and this high quality 10 year whiskey that checks all the boxes this whiskey costs 170 dollars and that is the sort of achilles heel for this whiskey is this whiskey worth 170 plus dollars if you can find it no it's, it's just not it's just not worth that um you are getting that big abv again it doesn't quite have it under control and you are getting a, a cast strength whiskey with a really nice age statement in some exotic and i assume expensive casks but on a value sort of rating, this one's got to be docked um, for that um, price tag. So it's four and a quarter final rating on the nine year. Um, this is going to keep the four and a half. So I have to say the winner of the head to head face off is going to be the Lechig 10 year. Very, very close to very different um, whiskeys. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you will subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos we have coming on the channel. You can use this big button that's going to pop up right over here. And I'll see you on the next one.